So I grew up your typical jock athlete and, um, you know, played sports year round, was always very much into sports, was always very much into strength training. Um, from the time I was a small child, anytime I saw someone big and strong, I was like, oh my God, that's how I want to be. Um, but at the same time, the whole time I felt like I was supposed to be female. So I had these, you know, seemingly two contradictory forces driving me my whole life and through adolescence and, and being a teen and even, you know, in my early adulthood, basically tearing me apart. And, um, but yeah, so on the outside, I appeared to be this total super jack and, you know, played baseball, football, wrestled, and then, you know, went in the Marines and then ended up in presidential security and, um, under president Clinton and, you know, did all kinds of crazy stuff in there. And I, and I excelled in those environments, you know, I did very well and I was always hyper competitive and then, um, you know, started doing some, I've been lifting since I was nine, but I uh, did a couple competitions in high school, a couple in the Marines and then got real serious about it. Um, after I got out of the Marine Corps, and then um, spent, you know, next decade and a half working towards winning world championships and uh, ultimately getting the all-time world record for my weight class. And, you know, fortunately, I was able to achieve those things. And But the whole time I was dealing with this gender conflict and, and um, you know, it, it just got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And uh, about a decade ago, I started coming out to people and, and uh, it was very difficult very difficult time in my life and and then uh, what the documentary focuses on is the last several years since I was outed publicly okay so basically I mean I was already out to family and friends fortunately and I and my own children had known I told them when they were very young so they had uh -huh. known their whole lives the good thing was I told them when they were two four and six and um, it's actually a funny story and uh, so I sat them down and explained to them you know kind of what that meant in, in age-appropriate terms and then I said, well, I'm going to change my clothes and, and uh, you know, two, four and six little boys, they're hyper running in and out everywhere. And so I'm in the master bedroom getting ready and, and uh, I get all done and I'm like, okay, guys, come here. And um, my oldest walks up to me and looks at me and he says, wow, you look like a girl, a really, really big girl. <laughs> and I busted out laughing. And then they just went back to playing and, and uh, didn't think anything of it. And so they just their whole life, they've known that's part of who I am. And, and uh, you know, they, it was before they learned prejudice and learned hate and discrimination. So to them, it was just like, OK, this is just one way people are different. And, um, and it was actually an absolutely good decision that I did that. And it's, and it's actually helped them be very secure in who they are, be very open minded and accepting of others differences. And, um, and it built a really strong bond between us because they knew they could trust me with anything. They knew if I was willing to be open and honest about that, there's nothing I would hide from them and that they could be open with me and I wouldn't judge them. So it, it's made for it. And I think you really see that in the documentary. I have an amazing relationship with my boys and a very strong bond. And, and uh, that was always very important to me. Right, exactly. And then, well, that's what we've been taught to believe, right? From day one, little girls are, you know, what are little girls told? Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, sweetie, be careful. You know, and then what are little boys told? You know, be tough, be a man don't show emotions. And so we're conditioned from day one to believe that strength is for men, muscularity is for men. And that's what I believe too. So I saw these as, you know, opposing forces and that like I had to pick one or the other. And so initially early on when I tried to transition, that was always involved losing lots of muscle and losing lots of strength. And then that really would really bother me because I was passionate about those things. And, and I worked very, very hard for a long period of time to get to where I was. And it wasn't until I got close to the women in the strength training community and realized they struggle with the same thing. They want to get bigger. They want to get stronger. But yet everyone around them is like, oh, you look like a man. You look gross. Why would you want to do that? But yet they find it very empowering and love doing it. But it's what we've been conditioned to believe that's not true. Strength has no gender. Courage has no gender. And um, so it took me you know, coming to that realization to really move me a lot um, much further forward in being comfortable in who I am. And I'm not to say that there's still not days I struggle with it because, you know, going out in public and I mean, I'm way smaller and not nearly as strong as I used to be, but I'm still extremely muscular and, you know, and strong for a woman. And um, it makes life you know, more challenging and more difficult because I do stand out and people see that. And, and uh, you know, and of course, with social media these days, there's all kinds of haters and people saying nasty things. And and uh, but I'm, you know, I, I think I'm beyond all of that. And I'm very secure in who I am. And and uh, but uh, no, there are days that I struggle with it. And I, um, you know, I think about losing more weight or thinning down and, you know, just to make things a little easier. But uh, but, um, you know, all in all, it's just I, I try to not focus on, you know, whether things are feminine, masculine, male or female. I just try to do what makes me happy. And, that, and that's really brought me a lot of peace and, and comfort. Yeah. So the thing is, like I said, I'd been very open. My, I'd been out to my friends and family for about 10 years. And I was also out to a lot of the elite level powerlifting community. Um, some of my sponsors knew.
Um, all the guys I competed with and were sponsored with knew. I was very open about it at that level. But I wasn't out to the fan base and I wasn't out to the general public. And um, but I knew being as open. And the only reason I wasn't 100 percent out because I was worried what kind of effect this would have on my boys. I was worried about how their teachers and coaches might react, about how their friends might react, about how their friends' parents might be towards them. And I didn't want my boys to have to deal with that. So that's what I was waiting for. But we knew, being as open as I was, that there was a chance I could be outed. And, and I don't know, like the guy was Louis Marco. He runs like a you know gossip type vlog on uh, YouTube about bodybuilding and powerlifting. And somehow, one way or another, he found out about it. And basically, um, I had um, separate... Um, social media accounts for Janae and then and for Matt previously. And uh, somehow he found out about those accounts, made a video about it and outed me. And it turned my world upside down in a matter of hours. And even though I knew this could happen and I thought I was prepared for it, it was way more than I was ever expecting. I mean, I'll never forget it was 11 o'clock on a Monday morning and my, my phone starts blowing up. And if, initially it's my friends all being like, dude, you just got outed. You just got outed. And, and then, um, and then it's TMZ inside edition, like all these people wanting interviews. And I just thought, you know what, if my story is going to be told, I'm going to be the one to tell it. And, um, in, in hindsight, it was a blessing in disguise because now it's allowed me to get into activism, get into speaking and education which is very important to me. And fortunately for my boys, it really hasn't been a big deal. Um, you know, the coaches and teachers have been fine. Their friends have asked some questions or joked about it a little bit, but for the most part, that's not been an issue. You know, we've had things like their, their friends' parents saying nasty stuff, but never directly to my boys and not to my face. So, you know, hey, that's whatever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so all in all, it's probably actually been a good thing, but, um, but not having it, you know, not having planned it myself, it, it, it definitely turned my world upside down for a while and was a big adjustment. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it was never really officially in a ban, I guess, but um, I don't know that there's anywhere for me to compete. And to be honest, I um, I have no intentions to compete as a woman. Um, the thing is, is that no, and, and don't, I don't want people to misunderstand this and think that I'm saying that it's not fair for transgender people to compete because that's not what the research says. The research says that, you know, what we've seen so far is that as long as people are on hormone blockers or have surgery and have been on estrogen for at least a year, it actually is completely fair. And, um, you know, they don't have a huge advantage and we have not seen, I mean, People don't realize that transgender women have been able to compete in the Olympics since 2004. And in that time period, we have not seen, not only have we not seen a single world record broken or a single gold medal won, we have not seen any transgender woman win a medal or even qualify for an Olympic team. It's For years, it's been legal for, for um, transgender women to compete in the NCAA, and yet no national champions, no broke college records. And so there is no indication that, um, you know, that it is unfair and that trans women are going to have a huge advantage. It just hasn't happened. But in my case, what's totally different is, um, well, you know, not only competing as a professional powerlifter and bodybuilder for so long, and, and I was number one in the world as a male. So, you know, obviously you'd think I would have an advantage coming over the female side. But, um, but the thing is with my hormones, um, I'm still working with endocrinologists to balance everything out, but I feel best on a combination of female and some mild male androgens. And that's allowed me to preserve more of my muscle mass than otherwise I would have and to keep my body fat lower than otherwise would be possible if I was only on estrogen. And for that reason, it, it makes it is, it is not fair for me to compete with women. And I have no intentions of doing that. And then the other thing is, is I just feel that it would, it would be a very negative thing because it would bring, I would never want to do anything that would hurt either transgender people or the sport of powerlifting. And I feel like it would bring a lot of negative backlash and people would be like, look, see, this is why trans women should not be able to compete. And uh, so for those reasons, yeah, I might, I might compete as an exhibition lifter or like a guest lifter or something like that, but I have, or maybe in a special um, LGBT division or something like that. But that's, there's controversy about that too, whether that's really the right way to approach things. Um, but, but I definitely, like I said, I have no intentions to compete as a woman. So when people get all riled up about that, they, they don't realize that I have no intentions to do that. And the thing is when people think, I think a lot of people don't realize too, unless they follow me is that not only do I identify as transgender, I also identify as gender fluid and non-binary. And that simply means gender fluid simply means that there is a degree of fluidity to my gender. There's some days I feel more masculine. Some days I feel more feminine. It does change sometimes just depending on the day or depending on the situation or who I'm interacting with. And then also like non-binary means I just don't fit neatly in a box as much as I would like to. And as, as easy as easier that would make my life, it just doesn't work that way for me. I, I can't easily be defined as just one thing. And um, I, I like to say like in a world of black and white, I'm very gray. Like everything's, you know, kind of mixed together and it's very blurry. 
story. And the thing is, there's a lot of people like that, but we're pressured in society to fit in these boxes. But people are incredibly complex and it doesn't always work that way. So for me, you know, yeah, I definitely have a female gender identity, but there's, I have some very masculine aspects to my personality, always have and always will. And the same thing, I'm, I'm hyper feminine as well. So it, it's a unique combination. And, and, uh, but there's a lot of people that just don't fit neatly in the female or male box. My advice to be anyone who feels this way would be to, you know, as hard as it may seem, and it may seem impossible at the time, I thought for a long time that my life would never work. And there, there was at the worst point in my life, I actually considered suicide because looking at things objectively, I didn't see any way it was ever going to work out. You know, I'm looking at me as a former Marine and, you know, world champion powerlifter, and I'm thinking, how could I ever transition and how would my life ever work out? But the sentiment you hear from trans people all the time is if they have one regret, it's that they didn't undertake things sooner. And um, because, you know, life's too short and uh, it's too short for anyone, even trans or not, to not be authentic to yourself. So it's anyone who's struggling with anything. Um, I'll tell you what, when I came fully out, it was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders and allowed me to move forward so much as a person. And I, and I, I won't say it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be bumps in the road. It's going to be difficult, but I can absolutely say it'll be worth it. So if there's any advice I can give, it's be authentic, be yourself, be proud to be yourself, and don't let other people make you feel bad about that because there's always going to be haters. And that's one thing I learned too. Even when I was world champion and you know supposedly this person everyone loved, there were still haters. There were still people who said nasty things no matter what I did. And so there's always going to be those people. So don't let them stop you from being authentic and being yourself. Yeah.